Yes, sir. On it. I'm taking it back to the future. What up, War Room Nation? Welcome to another edition of Inside the War Room. It's your boys from War Room Sports. I'm Devin McMillan. I'm with my homies, Jimmy Williams. That's right, no lower third, but you still can find me at me, ladies. And my man B. Austin. Only like 5% out of 100. Best Bird. video in the business. Look, coming to you guys to talk a little bit today about the NBA Finals. The matchup is set. Miami Heat versus the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, the Heat finished off the Indiana Pacers in a non-competitive Game 7. Bludgeoning. Kind of what I expected. But uh, let's move on and talk about the NBA Finals. Let's talk about this matchup, fellas. Um, let's jump right into it. B. Austin, what do you think about the matchup in general? Um, the Spurs, you know, they've been resting for about 10 days or so. Uh, do you think that's good for the Spurs, bad for the Spurs, good for the Heat? Like, what's up um, with this whole rest situation? The rest situation, I think that because of the, the age disparity on the Spurs, it's going to be good for some folks, bad for others. Tony Parker gets a chance to get a little bit more healthy with 10 days of rest. Manu Ginobili gets a chance to get a little bit more healthy, which, by the way, Manu, like, what's up with your game and what's up with your rooftop up there? But, um, I mean, the, the older players, I think it always benefits them. Um, the most pivotal players in this series are going to be Kawhi Leonard and the boy Green. Um, I think that they, they're going to have a huge, huge – job because we know what we're going to get from Tony Parker. TP going to bust real ass. Um, I think that if Dwayne Wade is healthy, he's still by far and away better than Manu. But if Dwayne Wade is not healthy, I think it's more even and perhaps even Manu gets that edge. Um, so then that leaves us with LeBron James and and, and Kawhi Leonard and, and Green. I mean, what's what's going to happen there? That's, that's where the matchup is. Tim is going to get a hundred. It's game. going to be it's going to be Green and Leonard uh, getting that assignment of guarding LeBron James. Right. Uh, one of them is going to have to at times guard Dwayne Wade um, because of, you know we know Manu doesn't start, but we do know he's going to get those those type of minutes, especially in a final series. Um, I don't know if I think the whole Spurs age thing gets overblown at times. Um, it does. Miami mm -hmm. as a team. Is just as old as the Spurs, but Miami's nucleus, their core players, you know, are younger and basically in their prime. Um, right. We all know Tim Duncan, even though he's still a viable threat out there, is not in his prime. But what posed a, a problem for Miami in the last series was the size of Indiana um, with uh, Hibbert and West. You had that again with Tim Duncan and Tiago Splitter. I don't know if Tiago is aggressive enough to even, you know, cause the same type of problems, but he can hit the boards, you know. And But one thing the Heat showed you in that game seven against Indiana is when they put their minds to it, sometimes it really just doesn't matter because when they had to have it, they out-rebounded uh, Indiana. They, they shut Hibbert down with the double teams and playing them real aggressively. You're not going to be able to do the exact same thing to a Tim Duncan because he's seasoned. He knows how to pass out of a double team, so it won't stifle him like it stifled uh, ever in the, in the last few games. Jimmy, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts right. on this? Here are my thoughts, yo. My thoughts are this. Um, Greg Popovich, yo, is that dude, man. So Miami um, had a tough time with Indiana, and now they're in the finals. But grown man ball is something they got to deal with because right now, they about to put on. They about to play the Spurs and and Pop and Pop knows how to win championships as as we've seen before. He knows how to make adjustments. Probably the best in the league at this point at making adjustments. So I'm anxious to see this series. Now, with that being said, um, I'm not going to go through each uh, individual player because you know I know it's going to sound crazy when I say this, but the X factor or whatever you want to call it is the fact that the Miami Heat have the best player in basketball right now in his prime, playing the best basketball. So in my opinion, I think that is what's going to matter. It depends upon how LeBron plays. And I know that sounds crazy, and it sounds very simple, but it's yes, the bottom it line. It's, it's, but it's the see. bottom line. But to me, me, and, to in me, my opinion, I, I kind of think LeBron's days of not showing up sometimes are over. So I really don't think that the series 
Okay, wait, what, 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 him, what, what I, I think we know is 30, no, yeah, 30, I think 15, we know we're 10 really, from him. No, feel, feel, me, feel me real quick, feel me real mm-hmm. quick. What I'm saying is this, LeBron, Birdman hand rubs, by the way, what I'm saying is LeBron, of course, is going to get his, but LeBron is at his best when he elevates his team. And it's not, right. it's not just one of them things where I'm saying, hey, he's like a rah-rah type guy. But there's games when he gets into his teammates' face, he actually elevates those guys and makes them play at a different level. So, right. you know, in a couple games in his past Indiana series, it looked like he was back in Cleveland. Um, but once he got in guys' face and made them step up and play the type of ball they're able to play with Birdman coming off the bench, even Rio in spots, they're going to be tough to beat. LeBron right now, this is it's his league. I mean, it's yeah, that's yeah, what no. it is in my opinion. So you've I, I definitely you've bought into that whole. You've bought into that whole performance he puts on for the camera, Jim. No, it's not about the performance. Because actually, actually, it's not about Jawan. It's not about Jawan. Jawan did the heavy lifting off the camera. No, it's not about the performance he puts on for the camera, man. It's not even about that. It's about his teammates knowing. Listen, yo. This dude also leads by example. He's out there playing. LeBron didn't have a bad game in the series, in my opinion. Yeah. No, but that's what I was saying, you know, before you said all of that. That's why I think it doesn't hinge on LeBron because you know what you're going to get from LeBron every night. It's about if Wade and Bosh are going to help out because if they didn't step up and get more active in Game 7, no matter what LeBron did, unless he went for 50 in that game, they might have lost that game. Yeah, but a lot lot of them – a lot of them stepping up was him, him like allowing them to step up. Now, what I mean by that is this: sure. Listen, listen. LeBron didn't take his first shot until they had eight shots. That was done. You can't tell me that wasn't done. Like he didn't know what he was doing in doing that, trying yeah, to get but them I'm involved. Not, I'm not. It's not it's like that's old not school. It's the old school stuff Mike used to do. It's the old school stuff Mike used to do. Something that I'm not used up to. Up until that I mean, game, he up until that game, he hadn't done that. Yeah, but at the same time, LeBron has always been an unselfish player, so. That kind of thing doesn't surprise me. I don't really think it changes the dynamic of the mm-hmm. game that much. I mean, what I'm saying is he wasn't line, playing that yeah. right. I mean, if LeBron didn't play well, of course they don't have a chance. But I just don't think there's a chance that he's not going to play well. Yeah. So I still think it, it, it depends <laughs> on, on Wade. You, know, you probably, you probably <laughs> also thought that going into the Dallas series. But, you know what I mean? Uh, it is what it is. No, you no, never no, know. Because I, did, I didn't have that kind of confidence in LeBron back in okay. the Dallas yeah, series. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. when, that's when we were doing our job being analysts and, you know, what people call you when you're – Giving constructive objective. criticism. Yeah, that's, when you're objective, that's when I was a hater. hater. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you're a hater. Yeah. Listen, so, man, being being the, the great coaching mind that I am, the strategist that I am, and sitting at the round table with the joint chiefs of staff, let's just keep it 100. LeBron James, Coach Popovich is figuring out a, or devising a scheme that will allow LeBron James to get 30, to get 40, to get his numbers because why? You can't stop him from getting his numbers. He's going to get his numbers regardless. And so it's about keying in on the other players where you have a chance or an opportunity to stop them. So it's not even about LeBron. At this point, LeBron no, being the see, greatest you're player. Kinda, you're kind of making my point, though. Greatest. You're making my point because but LeBron, LeBron being, even when hold you on, keep... Hold on, hold on. LeBron being the greatest player in the world, he's going to get it. He's going to get his. Who can stop it? There's no one on San Antonio is going to try. I think Pop is going to try to do something to make it look like Cleveland again. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Force I, LeBron I think, to score every time. Especially, especially since but we Austin, started for two or three games. Point, last my point, my point he's is. Try to make it look like Cleveland again. My point is he has to recognize that, and that's why I said it's key on LeBron, because he has to recognize, yo, I can't just go out there and get my 40, even if that's what they're trying to dictate to me. I have to make them. I have, I well, have where's to the chess much, game? No, but but Jimmy, what what the the point that I'm kind of making is there were times that LeBron's never, you know, he's always in that mode. Even if he's scoring, he's in that mode. He, there were times in that last series where he was doing everything he could to get guys involved, and they were just stinking it up. So if they're yeah, stinking I mean, it, 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 it up, it's what can he do? Also, also just I mean, he can't just touch them on no, the no, head. Saying, and look at look at, look at field goal attempts. Field goal attempts in in, in the games they won uh, show a, a difference between the games yeah, they cats. lost. Cats are scared to shoot. Cats are scared to shoot. That's not LeBron. Yeah, I, mean, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take the shot. If it's low in the shot, if the time is low in the shot listen, clock, man. and the ball's coming back around, it's going up. It's not like LeBron. Listen, was I, mean, I feel you. I mean, because he's gonna try to find a way to get those guys going. I think possibly that's the only way. Try. That's the only way. Yeah, right. it's the only way they win the series. Yeah, I mean, the Spurs definitely pulls Yo, a problem. Who you so rather? Who you rather? Who you rather? Who you rather try and stop? Dwayne Wade or LeBron James at this point? Who I'd rather try to stop? 
Yeah, who I rather try to Dwayne Wade. See now, now Chris I mean, if that's easier to do, but my thing is, will that win me? Will that will even happen? Will that win game. me the game? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, LeBron, LeBron getting sixty and no one else getting off. Yeah, that'll that'll win. That'll work. That'll work over. Work Saturday. for who though? Work for who? For the Spurs. That's the only shot they have. Trying to key on LeBron and stop LeBron. That ain't no, work. nobody said that. Nobody said that. Yeah, Kawhi just has to try to make it difficult for him, but he's going to be like Paul. Luckily, Kawhi Leonard is not dependent on like Paul George was. They needed Paul George offensively, but the fact that he had to guard LeBron James the whole time, you just weren't going to get that that output every game. They don't need that output from Kawhi Leonard. Just a couple of open my shots. Man, my they man, want him to play the Lance. Bruce Bowen, so so he can he can expend he can expend his energy. He can expend his six fouls without hurting the Spurs as much. As a Paul George being in foul trouble all the time, so sure. let's let's go with predictions, man. I mean, we all know what the Heat are working with, best record in the league. Um, we all know what the Spurs are working with, the team that everybody's wanted to count out for the past five years, and they just keep doing it. Um, be well, honest, the Spurs, who, who's going to win and why? Uh, I got the Heat in six. You got the Heat in six. Yeah. My, um, I got the super team. My thing is. I, I, I want to see which bandwagon is going to grow the largest, and there's going to be different reasons for the Spurs bandwagon getting as big as it is. First of all, Man, the bandwagon all, is having no lose situation. Yo, they can't right. lose. They, they can't lose because you know the Heat wins. You know that bandwagon is happy. If the Spurs win, y'all know what it is. Tim Duncan got as many rings as Kobe, <laughs> so uh, you know. There's no argument for Kobe being the greatest player of the generation. I've already heard that. This is not coming from me. I've already heard that talk starting. I mean, I but the thing is, though, but, um, it, it's always been a question between those two anyway. Like, that yeah, argument's big. That's what I'm saying. But, but, but what not we talked about last, on the – Not over the last five years. It but look, no, but what, what we've talked about on the show last week, on the radio show, uh, it, it's, the, it's the Michael Jordan effect because, personally, I don't think – championships are all that matter to be able to make that argument. Tim Duncan's already in that argument. Even if he had two two championships, he'd already be in that argument. Yeah, absolutely. But the fact that people are now, okay, if he gets five, then it's a definite that he's better. I mean, if you thought he was better, then he's already better. It doesn't take him winning another Yeah, it's, it's totally ridiculous. It's, that's totally ridiculous. And that's a whole other video. Guys yeah, based what, like, you know, just championships in a team sport upon yeah. who's better. That's just ridiculous. Right, so, so, so we can get out of here. Can I give my prediction, and then you can go, Jim. I'm, I'm, I'm with B. Austin. I think Miami Heat take this in six. I think uh, Indiana woke them up, gave them all the trouble that they were going to have. Of course, the Spurs are going to be a tough out with Tony Parker playing the way he's playing. He's the, he is the third best player in the league. <laughs> um, so I, I'll go with the Miami Heat in six to get, uh, you know, their second title in a row. They would yeah, only be about clarify six more. Sarcastic for the slow people that I ain't got to video. clarify nothing. If you slow, then you slow. There yeah. you go. Teach. Talk to him. Yo, my prediction is this, yo. Nas don't explain his rhymes after he's saying. <laughs> Here's my prediction, yo. Pain. No, but all jokes aside, um, you know, I, I think that LeBron and the Heat will win. I just think it's his time, and it's nothing, you know, no one can do about it, you know. Yeah. They get that second, then they need six, I just, six I just more to see, fulfill the promise. But. Yeah, I just want to see a great series, though. So I hope that it can be extended to seven because I like to see these guys play when, like, all the pressure in the world is upon them. And that, that's on both sides. You know, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, LeBron. It should be a great series. And Jayden one thing Rose, I do want to say is – Jalen Rose will put all the pressure in the world on Tony Parker. <laughs> and one thing I do want to say is um, although we talk about Pop and how great a coach he is, I think that Spolstra has become a good coach over the last just, couple of years. I didn't say great, but good. He gets he's no like, love. He's he gets not going to get no love, respect. But, and I'm not even talking – I mean, of, of course, people say, well, how can he not be a good coach with those players? But I'm talking about the decisions he make in-game, yeah, uh, his some... adjustments that he makes. I mean, he's definitely studied under Pat Riley, and he's paying attention. He's become a good coach, so I just want to give a, him a shout-out. There was a few coaching moves in that last series that stood out to me. You know what I'm saying? We, we can talk about that on one of the next videos. Because, yeah, but I, I just want to give him props. Right, because, because he's we, definitely, definitely become a good coach. All right, so how many games, Jim, would you say? Miami, six games. I say the same. Miami's, it's funny. We all in agreement. Yo, everybody yeah. six, six games. I'm Miami's hoping it goes seven, but I'm going to say six is my prediction. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the Spurs win. But <laughs> I hope not. God. I'm the anti-super team. Ball, something they got to deal with. Go my ahead. team. Oh, man, ball. Hashtag. 
my team not involved. I hope every series goes seven, and in the seventh game it goes triple overtime. But um, both teams lose. Make sure you guys stay tuned to WarRoomSportsTV.com throughout the series, though, because we will be coming at you with uh, recaps of every game. You know, after they go down, we'll be right in front of the camera giving you a recap of the game, letting you know what we think, what adjustments we think should be made, things of that nature. So um, we're going to leave you with that. This has been another episode of Inside the Room. Swear on the Make sure you comment. Make sure you like the video. And definitely make sure you subscribe to the page because we got some stuff coming for you. WRS in the house. All right. So as usual, don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. I see you chumps on top. Three wise men. Kuwait is the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys diversified and educated.